Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here and today I'm out on location but I want to talk to you about how to choose a tripod for wildlife photography. So I'm going to get set up and then talk you through the process of how I choose uh, a support for my lenses, cameras, everything like that because there's a few things you want to think about um, before you spend the money and buy a tripod um, and especially as they are one of the best investments you can make in your photography, you don't want to go out and get the wrong one. So, oh, let's crack on. So today I'm down on the shoreline and I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to run through uh, how I would select a tripod for wildlife photography. Uh, it's a question I get all the time so I thought I'd go through some of the things that I'm looking for, features, stuff like that, that make a tripod excellent for working out in the field when you're photographing wildlife. Now I've got two models with me today. Um, I have my Gitzo Systematic, this is a 3542 LS from memory. Um, and this is my main large tripod. Um, this is the one that I will use if I'm using my super telephoto um, or my larger cameras. It supports up to 25 kilos. Um, you know, it's really big, chunky, um, and it's really for the heavy lifting. My second one uh, that I carry when I'm kind of going on a lighter weight assignment, you know, I don't need the super telephoto, stuff like that. I will opt for a smaller tripod like this. Um, this is the Manfrotto 190 Go carbon fiber. Um, you know, it's just a lot lighter, so if I'm working on stuff like landscapes, anything like that, where I might have to hike a long way but don't need to support a long lens, um, this will be the tripod that I'll choose. Now, one of the key things that you'll notice about both of these tripods straight away is they're both carbon fibre. Um, I know that carbon fibre is rather expensive for a tripod um, and it does up the price by a good couple of hundred pounds. I mean, this is a really seriously expensive tripod and this is, um, well, it's less expensive but still pricey. Um, but carbon fibre to me has major um, bonuses that just make it in the field. For a start off, they are just a lot lighter than an aluminium version. Um, you know, the lightweight nature of them means that if I'm walking a long way, you know, it's just a lot more comfortable, it saves your back. If you are more comfortable when you get to location, you're gonna wait it out longer, you can hike further, you know, and that is really important, and it's why I opt for carbon fiber. You know, it's a long-term investment for the, these tripods, so that spending extra money just brings it back in the long term. I'm never thinking, oh, I need a lighter weight tripod, because this already is superb uh, for what it offers me. Another feature of carbon fiber that's fantastic is the ability for it to dampen uh, vibrations. Lots of people just think about the weight, but carbon fiber has that benefit um, that actually just reduces small vibrations going through the tripod that overall just gives you a better support. And finally, a real awesome benefit of carbon fiber is the fact that it just doesn't pick up the cold in the same way that you get from aluminum. Aluminum gets super freezing, it like absolutely horrible on your hands in the winter, um, but carbon fiber is much nicer. I mean, it still gets a little bit cold, but if you go to super cold locations, you're going out to the Arctic, um, locations like that. When I was in, in uh, Latvia and it was like minus 20, you know, having that carbon fiber tripod is a lot more comfortable to use. And that again is another bonus to me uh, when I'm working on location. So it's certainly worth the investment. I know that of course, you know, for some people they can't afford the carbon fiber. So of course, looking for the same kind of features in an aluminum tripod is a great way to save some money, um, but still get an excellent support. So in terms of what I look for in actual general features around the tripod, the key one and the most important one that I straight away look for is the ability for it to go right directly to the ground so I can get low level with my subjects. Now the Gitzo model goes completely flat. That is fantastic because, you know, it's just so easy to drop it to ground level. So if I'm working with, you know, little birds that are running along the seashore, you know, foxes, anything like that that is low to the ground, I can just drop my tripod and have a super stable support um, right at ground level that's really important. Um, and this is just so easy because it doesn't have a central column, you know, you just drop it straight to the ground and it's ready to go. The Manfrotto does it in a slightly different way. Um, still the legs, as before, kind of, you know, have these press in bits that you press in and pull them up. Uh, they're a little bit stiffer than my Gitzo one. Um, but when you get this to the um, kind of situation where it's, it's flat, the problem is you've of course got the central column that means you can't get it to ground level. So what you have to do is simply undo the column, uh, drop it up like this, press the button in the bottom and it'll come out and then it will go to its side so you can get it flat. Now, this is great 
if you are working to do landscape work or you are doing macro, anything like that. But it is a bit of a problem when I'm working with a telephoto lens because of course my head is on its side. So if I was to use something like the gimbal, it'd be the wrong way around so I can't use it uh, and function with it properly. So this is why this tends to be more of a landscape camera uh, tripod for me than, than one that I use with the big telephoto lenses. A workaround that you can do is uh, they sell these small little uh, micro columns that just fit between your head uh, and they make a mini column so then you can simply just slot that down and then the column won't protrude out the bottom meaning you can use it flat to the ground and that's a fantastic workaround if you just want to have one tripod and you don't have the money to you know step up to something like the systematic now one feature that kind of splits opinion on tripods is uh, how the legs extend some people like lever locks but to me I really like twist locks um, simply, they just, I find them very easy to use. Uh, they're smaller, they don't kind of get in the way, and they're just very simple to undo, pull them out, and then twist them back up. I think one of the major features that I love about twist locks more is the fact that I can use them very easy with gloves on. You know, those little kind of levers are quite hard if you've got big gloves on. So being able to just twist, pull out, and put back in is very simple, and the, uh, the Gitzo is very good for that. So one of the things that they have at the end of the legs that's also great, if I can pull it off, are spikes. Now spikes are great if you are working on slippery surfaces like ice, anything like that. They just give you a really uh, great way to kind of push your tripod in and keep it firm. If you're working on wet ground, stuff like that, the spikes are really handy. Um, with the Gitzo, they also actually come with included snowshoe feet that for most people aren't gonna use in the snow. Um, but if you go out on the beach and your tripod starts to sink in, using the snowshoes around the bottom is a great way to get a bit more stability. Uh, but a lot of the time, I'm just working with the rubber feet um, because you know, for most situations, they're absolutely fine. Now moving up from the legs, we go onto the heads. Um, and I've got two different options here that I use for different things. This is my kind of long lens, super telephoto head of choice. Uh, it's the Wimbley Mark II. Um, this is a gimbal styled head. Uh, and what it does is it just allows you to smoothly move your camera like fingertip control. Um, and it, it's just great. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just put a camera on it and show you what I mean. Right, so I've got ahead and mounted a camera and uh, this is why the Wimbley is so good. Uh, it just allows you to move the camera with absolute fingertip control. Uh, and then when you freeze it, um, even when you let go without locking uh, the head up, it doesn't move. That's fantastic if you just wanna work with subjects really quickly, follow them along. You can undo uh, the mount on your kind of foot mount of your long lens, and it's just perfect for pivoting that camera and tracking stuff as you move. Um, of course, this head will only work with a camera that has a foot attachment. You can't mount the camera from here to it because it just obviously won't work as a gimbal. But for a long lens, a super telephoto, there really is nothing better for when you're working with stills and you want to be able to move quickly, follow and track subjects. The Wimbley is absolutely brilliant. Of course, all of these things come with a price. The Wimbley is not a cheap head. They're around about £500. You can buy cheaper knockoffs, but I must admit, it's just so well machined, put together, that um, I'd never buy a cheaper alternative. They're just fantastic. You know, it lasts you a lifetime. It's a once-off investment that you'll just use forever. So, you know, as with a lot of things in photography, you know, if you spend the money on the best stuff first up, you'll just be able to use it and work with it for a lifetime, and you won't have to keep upgrading stuff like that. I always tend to save up the money and spend on the best because long term, it's just a much better option. One thing you will notice is that all of my cameras are fitted with uh, the Arca Swiss style plate. Um, these are machined aluminium plates and they work across all of my uh, heads and stuff like that. So the Wimbley has an Arca mount, the Manfrotto head has an Arca mount, and it just means I don't have to change things over and I can just quickly move um, between all of my different heads and stuff. And that's really important for kind of simplicity and everything like that. So on my second tripod, I have a bull head. This is the Manfrotto X Pro, I think, something like that, X Pro Magnesium, yeah. This is what I use all the rest of the time if I'm not using a super telephoto lens, um, when I'm working with landscapes, anything like that. Um, it's brilliant for framing up, getting things, I just lock it down tight, you know, and it's really solid, it's not gonna move. So on this head, I also have multiple controls. I've got a panning knob at the bottom so I can lock the panning um, kind of independently. On the side, I have my main locking knob that kind of allows me to kind of move that, you know, lock it down, it's really firm. Uh, but I also have a friction 
knob on the side. Um, and what this does is it puts a level of tension on the head. So at the moment it's quite loose, but what I can do is really up that, and then it's gonna be really quite stiff uh, to move the camera uh, when I've got it mounted. And that's really handy if you're working with something that's a little bit heavier, if you're trying to do really fine adjustments, it just means that you can lock that down. And even when you loosen off the, the main kind of locking knob completely, your camera isn't just gonna tilt over, fall over, and you can just finely tune your composition and get it where you want. And um, that's a really handy thing to do. Now, the other day in one of my videos, I had this mounted up. Um, in a similar setup to the Wimbley, and that was using the Wimbley Sidekick. Now, when I travel and you know I'm flying, anything like that, taking the full Wimbley with me can be a bit of a nightmare. It's quite a heavy piece of kit, and often I will want to be able to use a ball head for landscapes, macro, stuff like that, but also want the ability to work um, with a gimbal style head. And that's where the Sidekick comes in really handy. So what it does is it teams up with your ball head. So if I move this down to the side, you drop it into the notch like this, turn it round so that the plate faces upwards, like so, and then undo this. The side kick then is simply this side arm of the Wimbley, uh, and then I can just literally get this like that and mount it in, make that easier for myself. And then when I screw it down super tight, what I have when I release the, um, the panning knob of the ball head is basically a small Wimbley that is fantastic um, for if you're traveling because you have the benefits of a ball head, but also the gimbal um, abilities of the Wimbley um, in one package. And it basically means, you know, it's a simple way for me to travel and get the best of both heads without having to take the full weight of, of both options. Um, and this is what a lot of the time I'll travel with if I'm going overseas, I'll pair the ball head, the Wimbley sidekick and the Gitzo legs to give me the best combination of everything that I'm gonna work with. You do get a little less support. Um, you know, it does work better with a smaller super telephoto like a 300 prime or a 200 to 400, even a 500 F4. Um, but for a 600 or a 400 2.8, um, you still want to have the full uh, Wimbley head for, for any of stuff like that. But again, these are things that you're going to look at and compromise when you're choosing a tripod. So that pretty much sums up my different tripod options that I'm using out in the field. Um, my main kind of go-to when I've got the Super Telephoto is the Gitzo 3542 with the Wimbley Mark II. Um, this is, you know, you can throw that camera around and use it so easily out in the field. If I am doing a mixture of stuff where I'm traveling, I'm gonna have the long lens, but I don't want the weight of the Wimbley. I'll go with the ball head on the Gitzo with the Wimbley sidekick to give me all those options. But if I'm hiking, getting around, um, and I don't need um, the extra support of my long lens, or I'm just taking landscape gear, I'll pull off the sidekick and just literally take the ball head and my smaller tripod because it's just far easier um, for me to tote around on my back. You know, small, compact, really easy to take with me um, and for sp supporting like landscapes and stuff like that it's absolutely ideal still has the twist locks everything like that but you know it just saves me having to carry the weight of the bigger git so if you are going to buy one tripod definitely go for the bigger one first um, because at the end of the day the support and everything that it's going to provide is much much more important than just a little bit less weight but once you get to the opportunity to possibly invest in two tripods having one that's great for your biggest setup and then a smaller one for travel uh, and any of those kind of lighter landscape trips it really is a great thing to have but i hope that helps i hope that runs through a couple of the uh, things that i look for in a tripod and uh, yes join me again soon in another video and if you have any questions about anything like that drop it in the comments below i will get back to you but until then i will uh, crack on shooting